What's up guys, hope you're all doing well. Today I'm going to be talking about my own personal mod list for Trove, which is full of some of the best mods out there right now. I have a few mods installed manually, but for the most part, these 39 mods are the vast majority of the mods that I have installed. The list is essentially made up of two different categories, with one category being mods that are in my opinion essential or required mods, and the other category being mods that are visually appealing or simply just fun to have installed. I'll be leaving timestamps for every single mod in the description, as well as two timestamps in all capital letters to help you skip to either of the two main categories. I also have a Steam Workshop collection in the description, where you can subscribe to all of the mods with one single click, in case you want to install them all at once. Be sure to like and subscribe if this video helps, since I took quite a lot of time to go through every single one of my mods to showcase what each one of them does. Also, if you couldn't tell already, this video is PC only, so I apologize to any of my console subscribers. Feel free to show this video some support anyways, but just keep in mind that these mods will likely never be coming to console. To start things off, the first section of this video is going to be a list of mods that I feel are the most important to have. These mods either drastically improve your gameplay or simply add some quality of life features that will make your life a lot easier. The first mod that I wanted to show off is actually a group of mods, all of which affect one specific thing in Trove, the UI. We're going to be starting off the video with the Dark UI mods, a series of mods that add some extra features to the UI while also improving the visual quality of the UI as a whole. I personally don't use every single Dark UI mod, but I do use 15 different sections, all of which I'll showcase briefly. The dark UI mods that I use are as follows. Better Collections. Care Sheet. Claims. Leaderboards Friends Plus Inventory Lockbox Menu Player HUD Quick Class UI Superior Loot Collector Superior Marketplace Clubs Adventures and Mod Manager. Each of these dark UI mods clean up the UI while also giving it a nice sleek dark theme that's very pleasant to look at. I honestly can't live without these UI mods, which is why I put them at the very beginning of the video. Also just a brief disclaimer before we move on to the next mod. My hotbar is a mod as well, but it broke at the latest BART update, so just ignore it for now, as I won't be covering it in the video. In addition to the dark UI mods, I also use three different mods from the enhanced UI series. These are basically the same scenario where they each improve the UI in some way, however they don't have the dark UI theme. The enhanced UI mods that I use are the Forge, Gem Forge, and Merchants. Each of these does a great job of condensing more details into the same window, 
making it easier to manage any of the tasks that these menus are used for. The next mod that I wanted to show off is the boss health mod. This mod is insanely helpful in delves and during rampages, since it shows you the boss's health, current health, percentage remaining, and the time that you've spent fighting the boss. There isn't really much else to say about this mod, so let's move on to the next one. The customized VFX buffs for the Arcane Marshal is, in my opinion, an essential mod, due to the fact that the base video effects for both emblems is awful. The Arcane and Martial emblems are likely the top two most used emblems in all of Trove, so it's kind of important that you know when they're active. This mod lets you easily know if your Arcane or Martial emblems are still active with a very obvious custom fire effect that surrounds your character when either emblem is used. Made by the same author who created the last mod, the customized VFX for Shadow Radiant Stellar is an absurdly helpful mod that will prevent you from ever missing another rare equipment drop. This mod adds crazy particle effects with large beams of light and custom sound effects for Shadow, Radiant, Stellar, and Crystal equipment drops. Not only is this mod helpful for spotting those drops, but it's also just so satisfying getting a rare drop and having a particle effect explosion with a cool sound effect. Here's a quick sample of what a crystal drop looks and sounds like. The next two mods might not be important for everyone, since they only apply to the geode caves, but if you do participate in geode cave activities, these mods are absolutely amazing. The Easy to See Critters Desires mod adds large circular rings around critters in need of help in the geode caves. This makes it 10 times easier to spot critters, and it even changes the colors for hungry critters and injured critters to make it even easier for you to tell what they need. Similar to that mod is the Egg Finder mod, which also adds those special visual effects around eggs to make them easier to spot. Both of these mods make geode caves quite a bit less painful than they already are, and therefore both deserve to be in the essential mod section of this video. Moving on from the geode caves, the Easy Cornerstone Waypoint mod is an amazing mod for when you're playing classes that need to restock on flasks often, or if you're farming and need to loot collect to free up inventory space. This mod simply adds a large waypoint to all unused cornerstone spaces that make it significantly easier to spot cornerstone plots from a distance. Another mod that's important for visibility is the Mini Boss Radar mod. This mod adds a giant beam of light that points directly upwards from any boss enemy. This is especially useful if you're trying to clear dungeons as quickly as possible, since it's sometimes faster to simply find the beam of light and bomb your way straight to the boss. The next mod on the list is the Item Per Hour Tracker. This mod shows you what your item per hour rate is for any item that you pick up, which is really helpful when you're farming one specific item. I personally use this mod a lot while I'm comparing farming methods for Flux Friday's videos, since it does a great job of showcasing how fast I can farm up certain materials. I also believe it adds a sound effect when you sell items in the marketplace, but this might just be a normal thing in Trove that I didn't notice before. The last mod in the important or essential mod section of the video is the Gardening Easy to See Watering mod. This one isn't anything too special, but it makes watering plants significantly easier so that you don't accidentally water the wrong plants. Now that I've gone through every mod that I think is important to have, it's time to move on to the mods that are less essential and more so just mods that I personally find helpful or interesting. Most of these are just cosmetically appealing, while the rest are minor changes that don't quite fit in the important category from the first part of the video. The first mod on the list is the Better Damage Numbers, Commas 2 mod. All this mod does is add comma separators to damage numbers, but it's very helpful for quickly reading damage numbers that are in the millions. The next mod is the Clock Plus mod, which adds three different things to track in the top right corner of your screen. The left part shows you how long you've been in a specific world instance, while the middle part shows you what your dungeons cleared per hour rate is in that world. The part on the right simply shows you what time it is for you in real life and can be configured slightly with one of the links on the mod Steam page. 
this next mod I actually almost put in my important mod section of the video because it's just that good. The crafting color fix mod is such a minuscule change but still manages to have a huge impact on the game. This mod simply changes the crafting and world tooltip colors to make it easier for you to see if an item has been collected or not. The tooltip will be green if you haven't collected it, or red if you've already collected it. This mod is great for helping you see if an item style has been collected or not, which is really useful when you're farming for item styles that you don't already have. Similar to the cornerstone waypoint mod from earlier, there are a bunch of different waypoint mods that I personally use, that I felt were too situational to include in the important section of this mod list. Each of these mods are very helpful for when you're farming for specific items or resources, but tend to only block your vision a bit if you don't actually need those resources. The Dragon Egg Fragment Mob Waypoints, one word by the way, adds waypoints to most mobs that can drop specific dragon fragments. I don't think it adds waypoints to every single fragment mob since it's a bit out of date, but it does help quite a bit when you're farming for these fragments. The next waypoint mod is probably one of my favorites since it helps in countless different scenarios. The Waypoints Edition mod adds waypoints to most of the item resources that spawn in adventure worlds, such as mushrooms, enchanted wood, bottles, cupcakes, and more. This mod is insanely useful for when you're farming any of these materials in particular, especially if you're trying to get the adventure quest completed for bones or enchanted wood. Unfortunately though, this mod doesn't add a waypoint for moonlight bulbs, which is why another mod on the list does exactly that. The Moonlight Bulb Waypoint mod simply adds a waypoint to Moonlight Bulbs. That's it. The last two waypoint mods are the Geode Waypoints Tier 1-3 to mod, and the Geode Waypoints Tier 4-5 to mod. Both of these add waypoints to Geode Cave materials, and are great if you're trying to farm for resources that blend into the environment in Geode Caves. Moving on from the waypoint mods that I have installed, there are four more mods that I want to go over before I wrap up the list. The Speedometer Exo Dave Edition mod is a fantastic mod for anyone who plays high mobility classes. There's something just so satisfying about trying to see what the highest move speed I can possibly reach is while flying around on my Neon Ninja. The next mod I'm not a huge fan of, but it certainly has its uses. The ExoDave Easy to See Biomes mod is a mod that I only very recently started using, but it certainly makes a huge difference. This mod essentially just removes fog from several biomes and makes the underwater areas clearer. The mod is fantastic for high distance visibility, which is why I have it installed for the Lunar Plunge event, but in my opinion it makes the game hideous in several locations. If you need to see things that are far away more clearly, then this mod is perfect for you. But if you're still looking to make Trove look nice, I don't recommend this mod. The Pyrodisc Plus mod is a mod that I only discovered fairly recently, but I've loved every second that I've had it installed. Since I have Pyrodisc on my main class, I see it constantly and I'm always annoyed about how much it obscures my screen with the visual effects. Pyrodisc Plus makes it so that Pyrodisc takes up less screen space while still looking pretty cool visually. It's a simple change, but it makes a world of difference. The final mod to wrap up the list is a pretty helpful mod that also has some nice comedic value. The Tome Reminder mod makes sure you never forget to change a legendary tome again. If you aren't familiar with legendary tomes, they're tomes that can only be used once a week before they stay equipped doing nothing at all. If you have multiple legendary tomes, you'll want to switch them as soon as they're done so you aren't wasting your tome progress. With this mod installed, if you finish a legendary tome, a giant message pops up on screen saying, Haha, you thought it was Rampage, but it's just your tome, dummy. Which in my opinion, just might be the best way to remind you to change your tome. That's all for this video. If you're still here, thanks for watching the entire thing, as it was quite a bit of information in a single video. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, be sure to like and subscribe as it really helps the channel grow. If you have any questions about anything in the video or suggestions for future videos, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.